Hello chess friends and welcome to your side of chess channel and welcome to the long-awaited semi-finals of the Speed Chess Championship in 2024 that you can follow now also live on chess.com. The coverage on chess.com is really great. Uh, Daniel Narodiski and Levi Rosman are covering this spectacular semi-final that's going on now between Alireza Firuja and Hikaru Nakamura. And we know in the other semi-finals we have also the epic match, the epic clash between uh, Magnus Carlsen against Hans Mokeniman. So I think it's really one of the most thrilling events that will follow in the next couple of days. I think it's really one of the most thrilling events for the whole year. I think the whole concept of the Speed Chess Championship is really great. It's so dynamic. It's so progressive. It's so sharp. It's so tactical. It has, of course, inaccuracies, mistakes or blunders. But I really love more uh, to watch this chess than rather watch maybe some classical time format events. I think this is really, really great concept. So we're starting now the semifinal with the amazing, amazing game game in the round one between Hikaru Nakamura against Alireza Firuja and the grip of this uh, event is like this first of all the players will play 19 uh, 19 minutes of 5 plus 1 chess then 60 minutes of 3 plus 1 chess and then 30 minutes of 1 plus 1 bullet chess which is really really a fast time format which is really one of the most spectacular uh, formats for sure and in the round one we had really really already an epic game an incredible game and if this match continues to be like this i think we're, we're, we have one of the most um, uh, most most spectacular events of all time so put your seat belts on in the round one already already a spectacular game between hikaru nakamura against alireza firuja so as i said the first games are five plus one in with the white pieces hikaru opened with the move d4 knight of six by alireza c4 and now g6 here by alireza firuja challenging now hikaru immediately he's saying we'll play maybe a greenfield or we'll play maybe a king's in defense and now hikaru goes into the anti greenfield stuff with f3 alireza Reza continues with bishop to g7, e4, and now d6. We have now the same -ish variation against uh, uh, the king's Indian defense. After knight to c3, kingside casting, and now bishop to g5, hitting now uh, the knight, which is now the so-called Steiner attack. This move, sh bishop to g5, is not allowing you uh, some stuff like this. Then after uh, e5, d takes, e5, d takes, e5, queen takes, d8, rook takes, d8, then knight to d5 is then very, very hard to uh, defend for black. So that's why uh, in order to break the pawn chain here by white in the center of the board e5 is of course not so good so that's why here alreza plays now the move c5 uh, hikaru advances the pawn has of course now his space advantage like in the common uh, king's indian stuff but i think uh, the, the position is getting more benonish if you're familiar with the benoni uh, defense um, because now we have this type of a pawn structure for black d takes c, uh, d, d, uh, d6 and c5 and now black's main concept is here uh, to break and enter to put more pressure on the queen side by playing a6 and b5 in the common king's indian when you play e5 uh, then you're trying of course to make an attack from black's perspective on this side of the board so here after move d5 that's why alreza continues with the normal plan with a6 b5 we have a4 by hikaru not allowing b5 to happen now e6 also a common i would say benonish move uh, to break a little bit here white powerful center in the uh, uh, powerful center that white built of course in the first place after e6 queen to d2 e takes uh, d5 and now c takes d5 knight to d7 uh, knight to h3 now when the bishop is not covering this diagonal hikaru uses now this moment uh he wants of course to play knight to h3 knight to f2 if you play here knight to e2 it's of course also possible but then you're standing in the way of your own uh bishop so that's why good choice here by hikaru knight to h3 and now after queen to a5 here also a beautiful move here by hikaru uh, rook to a3 this move is not allowing b5 immediately if you play i don't know bishop to e2 then b5 could happen and then you cannot take because of the tensions on the a file so that's why rook to a3 and now the rook is connected by the pawn on b2 we have knight to e5 now alreza attacks the knight that's why hikaru plays knight to f2 queen to b4 and now queen to c2 here by Hikaru Nakamura, we have now a theoretical novelty. Hikaru is trying now to play rook to b3 and further kick away uh, the queen from the b file. And now 
the real fun starts so here Alreza spices up the game with an abusive beautiful attack he plays bishop to d7 he's preparing again b5 here we have bishop to d2 Hikaru is noticing the tactical problems around the square b5 so he's saying if you play b5 then there is a problem knight to b5 and uh, the queen could be hanging but Alreza continues with knight to c4 because the queen is there he has the connection between the queen and the knight the game is already already very dynamic and now after rook to b3 Alreza makes a huge decision in place now knight takes d2 sacrifices the queen although there was a better opportunity i would say here for Alreza. better choices maybe here to play bishop to a4 this leads into complications maybe after rook to b4 but then you pick up the queen you lose also the knight you play bishop to b3 and in this tactical sequence what actually would happen uh, black would lose two minor pieces for the rook which is in my opinion still a risky choice uh, for instance the engine gives here still a better position for white but i think in this faster time format after b5 uh, that alreza could have played um, the game would be very very interesting i think it's a tough now uh, game for black to defend look at this this bishop is uh, aiming towards this side of the board these pawns are marching you lose the, you use your rooks in order to support the pawn storm here on this side of the board so i think um this this was probably uh here alreza's best continuation but for rook to b3 alreza makes another uh, spectacular sequence knight takes d2 sacrifices the queen immediately but now of course there is still this tension here around the square t c3 and also this knight is hanging so what alreza is basically doing here he's giving up uh, the queen for a minor piece and a rook which is still a good compensation when we think about it harder again in this faster time formats because mm, you cannot really see everything it's tough also for white to play the position because still this darko bishop is a very very dangerous piece and you see now in this tactical sequence hikaru lost also the darko bishop so still hikaru has a tough time on dark squares after c takes b4 queen to d2 uh, by hikaru which was not actually the best solution here for for white actually it's better to take even with the king then after b takes c3 and um, uh, b takes c3 you still have your king connected to the pawn on c3 which is very very important because because in the next couple of moves we could expect maybe here this kind of an attack by the dark bishop of course also by the rook so keeping i think here the position compact around the square c3 was a slightly better choice for hikaru but he played after queen to d2 um, which is also perfectly fine of course alreza took b takes c3 b takes c3 and now bishop to a4 and you see now um alreza has still i would say a decent compensation for the lost queen he has still these options here to push the pawns uh, this bishop is still very dangerous hikaru didn't castle he has of course still this dark square problems all over the board so very really a beautiful dynamic position for us to follow so here hikaru already already doesn't react correctly he plays c4 which is basically a loss of a tempo because um, uh, what you should do is to simply go with bishop to e2 then castle as fast as you can just get your finally rook into the game somehow compete against this potential pawn storm here on on the queen side but hikaru played c4 allowed yalreza to play a beautiful knight to d7 and like in the common benoni if you're familiar with the concepts of the benoni when you have the grip around the square c5 when the knight gets cemented on this beautiful square c5 it's then very hard for uh for white to make any progress uh hikaru found an interesting idea with queen to b4 hitting the knight actually again bishop to uh, b2 was better than a5 then you're trying to compete maybe finally as i said to get rid of the of this knight on c5 and then finally castle and get the get the rook into the game but after queen to b4 alreza actually had now a huge huge opportunity of course the pawn on d6 is hanging and usually you should not give up the pawn on d6 in your benoni structures uh but actually in this position you should do it because here the best choice for alreza was to simply play b5 and then after something like queen to b6 you play bishop to c3 you have to play something like this and then um after b takes c4 look at this the king is standing in the way of uh, of it, uh, of the bishop you cannot pick up the pawn finally i think the pawns are marching and actually believe me or not here black is even slightly better but uh, alreza played a bad knight to c5 he was simply annoyed by the possibility of queen to d6 of course very hard to see uh, what's going on now on the board especially as we said in this faster time formats now hikaru finally challenges the knight uh, it's not allowing this position to be fixed here around the score c5 alreza tried a5 maybe again b5 
slightly better than f 9 to c5 d takes c5 in a sequence like this maybe you can hold the position by pushing still the pawn here on this side of the board but uh, hikaru has also very dangerous pawns again the engine gives here much much better position uh, for for white after knight to d3 a5 uh, queen to a3 bishop to d7 and now finally knight to c5 d takes c5 and now a beautiful move by hikaru bishop to e2 now finally he realized that he should bring the pieces into the game although he had maybe the opportunity to pick up now the pawn on c5 but then the queen gets a little bit exposed by the attacks of the rooks and also what again black uh, could do is start to push the pawn which is very dangerous again i'm pointing out that the bishop on g7 is supporting now uh, the pawn that's marching on the a file i'm not sure how this game would and now in this particular position again the engine gives you equal chances for both sides so really i think it's now even the most powerful move uh here by hikaru nakamura he realized that he should as i said simply bring more pieces into the game bishop to e2 great move rook to b8 king to f2 bishop to d4 uh king to g3 hikaru says i'm perfectly fine here even if you try to attack me then i still have f4 and then finally i'll start also to push my pawns uh here on the king side b5 by reza again a bad move uh simply this whole sequence is forcing now a trade off light score bishop which is not so good for black black should not trade off more pieces black should try to do something with this pawn on the a file or even maybe to push the pawn here on the f file trying to let the position explode maybe and then maybe somehow attack the king that's a little bit of course exposed on g3 very very tough position but after king to g3 alreza tried b5 c takes b5 bishop to b5 and you see now in this sequence um alreza gave up now some more pieces trade off more pieces hikaru can actually hold the position now rook to b4 queen to c6 great move again by hikaru attacking the rook but also keeping an eye of this pawn that could march now also finally on the c file rook from a to b8 uh, rook to e1 and now rook to b6 unnecessary move again by Reza, but as i said this is very very hard to see again you should just try to spice up the game by pushing the pawn trying to do something at least complicate things but rook to b6 actually helps out here hikaru because he gets on the same square bishop to c3 rook to e2 rook to b4 and now again hikaru goes here bishop to e5 king to h3 we have c4 and now g3 finally hikaru is preparing now his dynamic opportunity here in the center of the board c3 f4 great counter play rook to b2 rook to e1 bishop to d4 e, uh, here we have d6 c2 d7 here by hikaru rook to b1 you cannot take of course then uh, here after uh, c takes b1 the pawn will be promoted so now a great move again by hikaru queen takes c2 allowing here rook takes e1 and now queen to c8 again forces uh the reaction here by black although maybe a slightly better continuation for white would have been queen to c7 forcing then uh, bishop to a7 and then queen, C queen to c8 because now the bishop is not so dangerous anymore there but queen to c8 is still i think uh here completely completely winning position again here for hikaru nakamura rook takes c8 d takes c8 now hikaru pushes the pawn rook to e2 we have an attack by the queen uh rook to uh rook to d2 and now queen to c7 preparing now the move e6 which is very very dangerous now to handle for alreza firuja and again alreza maybe just maybe can somehow hold the position but it's a very very uh good game here for white rook to e2 at least prolongs the game but what alireza firuja did he played now bishop to g1 he tried maybe to literally even checkmate here but now uh, hikaru played a beautiful e6 we have rook takes h2 king to g4 h5 and still hikaru can hide here on g5 and believe me or not in this particular position alireza firuja resigned so what What's the issue actually uh this is not just game over here for black this is actually a forced checkmate sequence you can just push the pawn but after a couple more moves and queen to h7 you're getting checkmated here uh, for sure so great game great amazing first game in the speed chess championship semi-finals between hikaru nakamura against alireza firuja this was incredible steiner attack against the king's indian defense really really spectacular queen sack by alireza firuja you saw 
he complicated uh, complicated things enough for Hikaru because there were also inaccuracies by Hikaru. But um, I don't know, then then afterwards Hikaru got his grip, found this beautiful bishop to e2 spectacular move, and has now I would say a deserved win in the first game of the semifinals of the Speed Chess Championship in 2024. So okay, I'll try to cover more games from this event, and of course don't miss also the other <laughs> spectacular semifinals between um, Hans Moke Niemann and Magnus Kars, which will be all also, also uh, very spectacular for sure otherwise you can also check out our previous analyzed games that we have covered so far in this event here are some links and if you like this content hit the subscribe button see you soon with some more videos and what do we say in the end chess is the best of course